Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a steampunk inspired doll. I'm so excited for this project as you can probably already tell. I've been waiting to do it for quite a while. No further ado, let's get straight into the project. I decided to use this Monster High Spectre Vondergeist doll as a base. To start, I tied back all of her beautiful purple hair before cutting it all off. It's such a shame, it was really nicely rooted and very soft. Next, I needed to remove her head so that I could remove the hair plugs from the inside of the head. Once she was all clean and bald, I decided to reroute her hair using some brushed out acrylic yarn. I ended up using this lovely natural brown color, however you can use any color you like for your doll project. In case you are wondering why I did not film the entire process of the reboot, that is because it went pretty much the same as last time. I broke lots of needles, it was very challenging, but also a ton of fun. To begin her face up, I blushed her cheeks using red and brown color pastels from the brand Myungyo. After I managed to blend the blush nicely into her skin, I took my colored pencil, outlined the features of her face before bringing in my acrylic paints. I redid her facial features several times before I was actually happy with them. I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go with her personality, so her eyebrows changed a lot, her eye color changed a lot. I really didn't know what I was doing. For her lipstick, I went with a very pale, very natural looking pink color. I also ended up giving her freckles, just because I felt like if I was going to give her a natural makeup look, I should really play up the details. And also, freckles are adorable. As the final change to her iris color, I painted them a base coat of brown before adding bronze, pink, and rose gold details. I would like to thank you all for your wonderful support as I deal with all of the technical difficulties behind the scenes. It really means a lot to me to receive all of your wonderful advice and words of encouragement, so thank you so much. I wanted the iris to have a nice fade to a lighter color in the center, and I thought white would be too stark, especially if I planned on adding a highlight to the center of the eye. So I just took some baby pink colored acrylic paint and put it in the center before dabbing it out with a paper towel. This honestly worked out so well, I will probably be carrying it into future doll face-ups. It seems every custom doll I'm figuring out a little more of my style. Thank you. 
Using my black colored pencil, I outline the iris to create depth. For the highlight and the top of the eye, I went with a pill shape instead of my usual white circle. And with that, the face up was done. It was finally time to tame that crazy hair, so I tied it off into two sections using tiny rubber bands. Then I began twisting the hair around itself to form space buns. With the hair out of the way, I could finally work on other things. So I decided to paint her arms white since I didn't want her hands to be clear. To form her bag, I made a pattern, cut some craft foam pieces, and secured everything with hot glue. I decided I would paint it with a base coat of black before coming in with brown acrylic paint to dry brush it. Ordinarily, I would apologize for my hands being covered in various shades of brown and black acrylic paint. However, you guys are used to it by now. <laughs> you all know I'm a messy artist. Since I have the acrylic paint all mixed up, I decided to paint a base coat of black over the boots I had planned to use for this doll and then dry brush those with brown acrylic paint too. While the clips are rolling, I would like to take a moment to say this project was really freeing. I had a lot of fun and I really feel like especially after the springtime where I barely made any videos, this summer has been a lot of fun. And I look forward to another year of fantastic doll making with all of you. To pull out the details in this wonderfully sculpted Monster High boot from a Draculaura doll, I used some rose gold acrylic paint. It looks lovely on the sculpted threads and on the, all the buttons. I really love it. I wanted to really do a good job on sewing the outfit this time, so I actually made my first doll pattern, and I made a complete prototype of this outfit, which I am very proud of. I will show the patterns on screen now, just so you can get an idea of what I did. This outfit consisted of a puff-sleeved turtleneck, a bodice, and overskirt, along with a ruffly petticoat. Since I didn't have the right color of fabric that I wanted for the bodice and overskirt, I decided to just paint some cotton fabric the right shade of brown. To make the fabric appear more leather and worn, I painted it a base coat of black before brushing on the brown shades I wanted. I sewed all the pieces to the overskirt and bodice in place before trying it on the mannequin doll. Then I decided I wanted some embroidery stretching, so I took some peach thread, pliers, and got to work. It seems no steampunk ensemble can be complete without some form of mask or goggles, so I sketched a pattern, cut out the pieces, and hot glued them all together. to admit, around this time in the project, I was losing a bit of my inspiration. Otherwise, I probably would have opted for foam instead of cardstock. However, I did my best and just kept moving forward.
finish off the mask, I painted it a base coat of black acrylic paint before dry brushing it with varying shades of copper and rose gold. One of the last accessories I decided to make were these cuffs, so I just painted some cotton fabric brown before cutting holes for the thumbs and just wrapping them around the hand and gluing in place. The final thing I made, which I actually forgot to record, was the petticoat. It has a couple layers of ruffles and it turned out super cute. And now she's finally complete. What do you guys think? Do you like her? I really enjoyed making her, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was so much fun. Honestly, this project was so much fun. It felt very freeing, and I just truly had an amazing time trying to make a pattern for the first time, making my first full outfit prototype, and I think this might be the first time I've done freckles on a doll too. I'm not sure. Honestly, I can't believe I made it this long without pouring freckles all over every doll's face. I just love them so much. They're so cute. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you really enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my Instagram where you can see lots of pictures of this doll and many other creations of mine. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!